Hello indie game fans, as stated last week, things are starting to pick up with more great indie game releases for the month, culminating in Valentine's Day on Sunday, although not that many developers are taking advantage of that this year. Still, awesome games coming right up in this edition of Indie Gaming This Week. We begin with the very strange Meat RPG, a pixel art horror sci-fi action-adventure RPG that is set in Canada during the gold rush, but I do think that it's from a Polish developer. The story goes that all is well in the mining town, but heavy frost and snowfall cut it off from the rest of the world, after which a strange substance began to appear, corrupting and changing things and people that it came into contact with. Awesome look and an interesting developer makes it of interest, though I wonder how polished this is. Produce the resources the people in your country request. Create a transport network to provide all cities with the requested materials. Improve resources by constantly developing and upgrading your industries. Provide sufficient storage space for resources. Since not all of them can be produced in every season, Choose new items each month to bring your country forward. Mini Countries is a wonderful little level-based puzzle strategy game where you're building production chains and supply lines to keep everyone happy. Upgrade your cities with a different focus for getting special benefits. Integrate famous landmarks into your country. Satisfy the demand for resources that cannot be produced in your country by importing them through the port. Love the look and the structure does seem to be like a mini city building or tycoon game, making it a great introduction to the genre. Master events such as a harsh winter which slows down your resource transport. And handle even more challenges in many countries. Always down to check out action roguelites, and a decent, if generic looking one of these is Medivalian, where the twist is that a classically medieval fantasy world has been invaded by aliens, so it's up to you to harness foreign technology and to turn it back on your enemies. Looks quite well made, where the intersection of sci-fi and fantasy is of particular interest, but again, it's another early access rogue light to keep an eye on. I'm a sucker for classic turn-based RPGs, so the very Game Boy-inspired Dragonborn didn't get my attention.
It's a smaller one of these by genre standards, coming in at about 10 hours in length, although what it does do differently is that the enemy and character designs in combat are actually at a much higher resolution. Still, one for fans of the genre, even more so if you love retro entries or have any nostalgia for the genre. The only lovey-dovey game for the week is Half Past Fate Romantic Distancing the sequel or mini-story spin-off of Half Past Fate from last year, where the narrative now shifts to a new couple trying to keep in touch during lockdown. Sure, it's a little opportunistic, but it's something that many of us can relate to, and given the background of the developer, I do believe that this will be made in good taste, not to mention using that same awesome pixel art look as the other game. The only bigger game of the week is Little Nightmares 2, the sequel to the tremendously popular horror platformer from 2017. According to Wikipedia, developer Tarsier Studios is 70 person strong, and as of 2019, is part of the Embracer group which just bought Gearbox, so certainly not that indie. Which is why I get quite irritated at comments stating, what about Little Nightmares and my coverage of horror games? I do have to admit that the original was well made, if not my thing, since I don't usually do horror, but I'm glad that there's a sequel for fans to enjoy. We kick off smaller games of the week with Adventure Field 4, a turn-based RPG entry that looks alright, although I personally have not heard of this series, so if you do know anything, do let me know in the comments below, but as a fan of this genre, it did get my attention. The Terraria-like crafting survival game, A Ground, gets console ports this week, and it's interesting since you're allowed to tech up all the way from the Stone Age into space, with fantasy elements like dragons thrown into the mix as well.
Aircraft Carrier Survival Prologue is the free demo of a management sim where you're put in charge of the said ship during World War II and have to fend off planes and submarines while managing the various systems and crew on board. of interest since developer Creative Forge Games did make good titles like Hard Quest and Phantom Doctrine, so do give this a look if interested. Remember this? I have very fond memories of the Flash games of Berserk Studios, which I played on sites like Congregate, where Berserk Flashback is a compilation of those games, retooled and repackaged, so take a walk down memory lane with this. It was a very important part for our growth at Berserk. Since Flash is dead now, we were sad to see all our games go up in flames. So we've put all our hearts into making this. Berserk Flash. Okay, so this is just Flash games, right? No! We did not take the same games, put it here and say, haha, you have to pay now. What we did is recompile all the games so we can do all of this, plus we made a cool little package that contains extra stuff to unlock. And we have a brand new unrelease game! Oh yeah, this is a cool little package we've put together to celebrate the Flash era. We hope you like it! Ready? Bunny Beats is an awesome looking procedurally generated rhythm game where you're making mochi like this viral gif. Looking absolutely adorable, and I do hope that there will be more modes and such with this. Highlighted and plays loudest. During the play phase, press the button to play back the active bunny's rhythm that you learned. Let's play through the next rhythm together. Hit signs will appear for each note the active bunny plays and will fill in as you play the notes correctly. If you hit incorrectly, you lose a strike. Be careful not to use too many or you'll fail the rhythm. Try this last one on your own. Bunny Beats. I hope you enjoy learning rhythms and making mochi. Great job! Earth Analog is an exploration flight sim that looks pretty good, where you visit various planets, exploring and unlocking the mysteries, drilling for artifacts, and unlocking new paths all in a bit to find a new home for humanity, looking kind of chill and relaxing. The Bullet Hell Avoider Mark is one way to practice one aspect of your Bullet Hell skills with the simply named Evade being of interest this week.
It's a very strange time for Halloween Forever to be getting a Switch port, but here we are, and it's a decent action platformer that is perhaps more appropriate for another time. Forces awaken in the darkness. The world needs a team of heroes. But sometimes that team is just a bunch of noobs and jerks. And only one person can save them. They're Healer! Healer's Quest is one of the most underrated RPGs with a unique gimmick where you play as the healer and have to do what it takes to keep your party members alive. There are some clever RPG progression systems and abilities, good writing and the wonderful watercolour visuals which is totally worth a play, getting a Switch port this week as well. I'll freely admit that yes, the look of Owl of the Crown was the thing that drew me to it, using very simple and clean pixel art for this strategy title. It has you managing a kingdom in this simple looking 4x strategy game, but the strategizing looks suitably complex and should be of interest to fans of the genre. I've put Lost to Time here since it's a Metroidvania title which looks okay, but more important than that, if there are any indie developers among you, this is not the way to do a trailer with the constant fading to black. Oh, I lost my wait, place. Wait, wait, wait. What the f***? What? What the f***? Uh, um, oh, everything's wrong. We have no power, I think. We've got a blinking battery light and a solid O2 heat. Okay, solid every Kasha light. I have where do I go? I'm so bad. I don't know where to go in the manual. How much I don't time? Know. We have no power. Do you... <laughs> the, the heat Kasha light is now blinking. Nomino is an asymmetric multiplayer party game in the same vein as Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes, but you're instead in a 1960s era inspired spacecraft with your friends playing as mission control with the Mano. Seems relatively early without too many bells and whistles, but could turn out to be neat, so it's one to keep an eye on. We got a bus overload. Um, can you can you press the bus A test button and and tell me what the amps dial reads? Uh, um, yes. The press the bus A test I, button. I I froze. I froze. <laughs> I do love puzzle games, so of course, Sudoku RPG got my attention, although my puzzle game of choice is Picross. However, it does look decent with the pixel art in the overworld, and I'm interested to see what RPG mechanics they bring into the puzzles themselves, and I'm always down to check out RPG takes on classic puzzle games.
quite liked Summer Catchers in 2019, an endless runner-type title where you adventure through wondrous landscapes, escaping the wintry north and chasing the sun in order to catch summer. It does get a little repetitive, but the landscapes and special events are totally worth it, and it gets a Switch port this week as well, which seems like a good place to play it. The Flower Collectors is a detective mystery title where an ex-cop in a wheelchair must team up with a journalist to solve a murder, and also gets a Switch port this week. Aldo stayed at the bench last night. He must have been close by when the murder happened. She's not my friend. I'm just helping her investigate a story. What about it? He looks... cautious. Not every day there's a corpse lying on your doorstep. These things take time. You've only just started. I don't have time. Shh, please. The Room series is one of the best point-and-click or toy box titles where you fiddle around with intricately constructed objects to unlock their secrets, where The Room 4 Old Sins comes to Steam about 3 years after its launch on mobile devices. Finally, we close off with another switch port of one of the best book lights of 2020, that being Undermine, so do go back to my earlier videos for more information on why this is great. I covered Tatapolis when looking at upcoming games of the month, and here we are with the release. A Metroidvania title with a distinctly noir vibe, I'm eagerly awaiting to see if this developer will manage to pull it off in what looks to be an ambitious title. Thou art with me. The Lord used to cast out evil, but he doesn't care anymore. Luckily, I am more than capable of doing this job for him. If you love action roguelites, one shell straight to hell will be of interest, where you play as the heavily armed Padre, having to destroy demons. While not the most polished visually, there's certainly a style to it, borrowing from games like Hotline Miami, Tesla vs Lovecraft, and even the tech sources to some extent, and again, as a fan of roguelites, this is on my list. Being a priest in a place like this takes patience, effort, prayer, and lots and lots of bullets.
Developer Munana did make the excellent Virgo vs the Zodiac from December 2019, and while their next main project is Key Locker, Osteo Blasts is headed up by their animator and is a spooky cool turn-based RPG that looks awesome. Like Dragonborn mentioned above, this looks to be quite the classic JRPG with tile-based overworld exploration, character sprites and turn-based combat. As a fan of this genre, it is of interest to me and I think that you should take a look as well. Purgatory, the land of lost souls, the realms of madness. Does anyone have what it takes to survive the nightmares of this realm? Another roguelite of interest is Doors of Insanity, which I've covered recently, so I'll leave you to the narrated trailer. His mighty steed on a quest of redemption. Monstrosities and damnation stand in their way, armed with sword, shield, and mystical cards. No defense, just attack. They will carve a path of merciless terror through their enemy. Whoa. I mean, we just started. Um, let's try that again. Witness a world where chilling on a boat on the river sticks makes you look like a total badass. Because you know you won't be thrown overboard to hell. Because you are really, really awesome. Limbo cannot hold you. You deserve paradise. Use your sexy charms. Befriend a scary witch. Master spells with your magnificent mind. Summon awesome allies for your enchanted entourage. And give respect to beings of infinite powers. Hey, what a cool story. Using a new powerful deck of defense cards, you will block, parry, and repost your way to victory. Oh, not again. Were heroes always this fragile? <clears throat> Strap yourself in. Uh, again? Summon a 1940s boy band. No! Oh, 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 I'm gonna be honest, this is not going the way we wanted it to. Okay, come on. Alright, next hero. More me for the grind. In a world where everyone dies and hope is futile. Yes! Alright! Good card choices, excellent equipment. Okay, solid tactics. We got this. We have our hero. Now, let's swing open the doors of insanity. We're Because I would make my list of the best upcoming city building games for a good reason, since it has all the expected elements of resource gathering and management, but adds in a survival element like they are billions, where you have to defend against enemies. set in a fantasy world which is very different from the steampunk zombies of that game, but I do like the look of this and should turn out pretty well, taking the number one spot. To see more of the big picture, check out these awesome videos and I will see you after the jump.